Well, it's a delight to be here. Um, I love Barcelona, and uh, I, uh, you can see from my tie, I'm in, in the right colors. Um, <laughs> it's not blue and red like Barca, but... Um, so, tonight I want to talk about management, um, but uh, it's an economics talk. And that's kind of unusual because economists typically have not paid a lot of attention to management. Um, that you can find, you know, there's the odd reference here and there. Uh, there's a paper from back in the 1880s by Francis Walker and and uh, Marshall mentioned it as something that might be important. Mm -hmm. And Bob Lucas in the 70s used management, differential ability of managers as the basis for his, his uh, model of size distribution of firms. But generally, you know, there's no M in the production function. We have capital and labor and ideas, but, but n no management. But in the last, and part of the reason for that, I think, is that uh, it's, it's uh, not been easy to measure. And things that don't get measured don't get paid a lot of attention to as real phenomena, um, which is a striking thing for a theorist to say. But um, in the last couple of years, uh, Nick Bloom, uh, at Stanford, the, lead, the first named author on this paper, um, though I point out that they're in alphabetical order, um, <laughs> um, and uh, John Van Rienen at the London School of Economics have come up with a, a way of, of quantifying management, essentially using some concepts from McKinsey that McKinsey had developed over the years in advising companies. And um, how do I move this? I thought. Oops. Well, last time I gave a talk, I got halfway through and discovered that I'd only that only half the slides had loaded onto the onto the memory stick, and uh, I had to wing it from from there. But this one, it would be a real shame because this this is a you're going to see this is an unusual uh, presentation. Um, so Nick and and John measure uh, quality of management. Uh, from one to five on 18 different dimensions, and then they average them out. <coughs> and they've now done that all over the world. And the, uh, the, uh, if I go to, yeah. So these are countries. This is the measure of the quality of management. And you can see it varies on average significantly between countries. Now, you know, we cut it off at 2.6. So it's, you know, it looks more dramatic difference than it would be if you added a constant to all of them. But, but, and one of the things you see is that there's a very strong correlation between the average quality of management in a country and GDP per capita. There's also a strong correlation between how long McKinsey's been at work in that country and the numbers too, but we th we're going to attribute it to, to something else. And in particular, if you look down at the bottom of the picture, if you can see well enough, the lowest, other than poor Greece, the lowest countries are Brazil, India, and China. Um, and India in particular, the score is quite low. The top is the frequency in the US. So there's some firms, some significant number of firms in the US that are out here almost at five. Uh, there are a few in India that like that. I imagine that Infosys and Tata and some of those companies are there. But what you really see is there are very few really, where is it? Um, oh, I see what's happening. It's bouncing off there and onto the wall. Um, there are very few, there are very, very few terribly managed firms in the U.S. And there are lots in India. And uh, 
so we wondered, and this, this raised a number of issues. Um, are, is this really bad management? Or maybe, you know, they're just doing what makes sense in the context of the Indian factor and product markets. And so Chad Syverson uh, has noted that there's uh, no potential driving factor of productivity has seen a higher ratio of speculation to empirical study than management. Um, does bad management matter for development? Uh, you know, that we, we argued a minute ago that, that uh, poor countries had lower management scores. You know, is there some causation there? We don't know. If you look at the development literature, they pay no attention to things like entrepreneurship uh, or management. You know, the, the handbook of, four volume handbook of development economics does not contain any substantial section on entrepreneurship. And then the question of why are so many Indian companies apparently badly managed and what might be done about it? So what we did is we decided to run an experiment. And we took, uh, we had, I'll tell you how we got it, but we ended up with 28 plants owned by 17 large firms uh, that make cotton fabric in the Mumbai area. So these are weaving companies. Um, and we hired international management consultants to go in and give them uh, some management consulting. Treatment plant, they were divided into treatment and control groups. The treatment plants got five months of very heavy duty management consulting to help them improve their management. The control firms got a month, which we hadn't really intended to give them that, but it turned out they weren't gathering any data that we could use. So we spent a month getting them to gather data. And we collected weekly performance, management, organizational and IT data um, we started in 2008, we're still going. Summary of the results. Um, well, first of all, our intervention raised total factor productivity by about 10%, and profits by a number somewhere between 17% and 130%. Um, the, the, that's a large gap, and we're arguing about it now. Uh, the 17 percent comes from taking their their uh, nominal cost of capital and mar multiplying at times their their uh, capital stock and uh, figuring that as their base profitability. The uh, 130 percent comes from taking the numbers that they told us were their profits, which may be somewhat suspect because. Every Indian firm that we've ever come across cheats on its taxes and hides its numbers. Um, as a result of the changes, owners decentralized decisions more to plant managers. These are all um, company, family-owned firms. And computer use increased substantially. Um, so that's the impact of better management. Why, so if there's these huge effects, the question is, why didn't they do something about it earlier? And the basic answer we come up with is they just weren't aware that they weren't doing well. They didn't know that they could be doing these things that were implemented. Even those, these things, as you'll see, are really remarkably simple and cheap. They just simply weren't there. They're largely elements of Japanese-based lean manufacturing, paying attention to quality and inventories and things. And they just didn't do it. They didn't know it would help, or they, they didn't even know about it, or if they knew about it, they didn't think it was help, and they were wrong. Um, another problem is that only family members can be directors in these firms. And so unless there are good managers in the family, there's not going to be good managers in the firm. And also, there's little competitive pressure. And we'll talk about why that is. But basically, these firms, these family-owned firms, um, can only grow if there's a brother to run the new plant. 